When I play music, the first thing I think about is, what is the characteristic beat of that particular song I'm playing? Then I try to concentrate on keeping solid time. The next thing I concentrate on is trying to make that particular beat groove or feel good. Then I try to be as creative as I possibly can with that beat. I'm going to help you develop four basic concepts to make you a better drummer today. These four basic concepts are one, define a characteristic beat of a song. Two, keep steady time. Three, make that beat groove, make that beat feel good. And finally, four, be creative with that beat. Besides showing you these four concepts, I'm going to give you an exercise so that you can practice these four concepts and hopefully prepare yourself when you get into any musical situation. I'm going to give you hand and foot exercises that you can play along with me to help develop your strength, your power, and speed and control on the drum set. What is the characteristic beat of a song? The characteristic beat is the beat you choose to play in a song. It is one of the two main ingredients that help make a song sound unique. The other is the melody. The beat is the, the soul, the spirit. It's, the, it's the, the foundation of a song. I'm going to play six different beats that I recorded on John Cougar Mellencamp Records. The first beat I'm going to play is from a song called Hurt So Good. The thing that's unique about this song is that I really didn't play anything that complicated. It was just that I played it steady and solid. And the thing that came through was my spirit and my soul. Each one of you has a unique personality and that's why you don't really have to play something complicated to make your point, to be unique. Just be yourself and play a simple beat and you will be unique. Hurt so good. A lot of times when you hear a song on the radio, you probably think, oh, I can play that beat. That's really basic. That's really simple. But what you don't probably realize is that this, the beat you're hearing on that song is the end result of possibly hours, days, weeks, and months of working on that music. So for example, in a song called Jack and Diane, I played this very basic beat when we started rehearsing. But the end result was a lot different than what I just played you. We tried many, many different things, and this is what we eventually came up with.
Another example that's just like this is we did a song called Crumbling Down. And I first played a beat something like this. Well, I'd played that beat many, many times, and I was trying to look for something a little bit more unique. So I got inspired by the guitar part that John was playing on the acoustic guitar. And instead of playing the eighth note figure that I usually play on the hi-hat, I put it in my right foot. So it went something like this. In the song Scarecrow, instead of playing the same beat over and over again as a one measure phrase, I had a two measure phrase. The first measure went something like this. And the following measure, the other part of the phrase, went like this. And so together, it went like this. In the song Laugh and a Tear, the effect I was trying to create was to play a simple beat as steady as possible, kind of like a drum machine, but with a human feel. And the beat kind of went like this. make the song sound unique. In this particular song, Lonely All Night, I played four quarter notes on the bass drum. And as simple as that may sound, I'd never done that before in a John Cougar song. So the beat went something like this. So basically, to sum it all up, I want you, when you're practicing or playing a song or sitting in with somebody or recording, to first identify what the characteristic beat of that song is. This is the starting point. This is the foundation. This is where you must start. Once you establish the beat, I want you to focus on keeping solid time. The drummer in the band has to focus on this the most because he holds the band together. But the other musicians are equally responsible for time. You can't force five musicians to play together if they don't want to play in time. Now, what I do to practice my time is I work with a drum machine and a metronome. I want you to do the same. Spend some time playing with a drum machine or a metronome and make sure that you play all your tempos steady. This will be an exercise and it will show you where you speed up and slow down. I'm going to play a drum machine and listen to them through my headphones. be able to practice everything with a drum machine, but eventually you need to be able to do it without a drum machine or a metronome. These things can become crutches. For two years I practiced with a drum machine and worked on my time and it became very steady. 
but whenever I played without a drum machine, I felt helpless. So I want you to practice without a drum machine. I want you to be your own drum machine. I want you to hear that click in your head. Once you establish the characteristic beat and you're keeping solid time, I want you to focus now on making that beat groove. This is the most important part of drumming because you are the spirit, you are the soul and the emotion in the band. You're the guy that can make the other players play great. You're the guy that can make the, the, the audience enjoy themselves, tap their feet or dance to a song. You are literally the soul of the band. I would rather listen to a drummer with no technique and lots of soul than to listen to a drummer with a lot of technique and no soul. And I didn't understand this at first, but until I was recording a song with John in the studio called Hurt So Good. And I really wanted to play something technically great, but the song just didn't, didn't call for that. And when I listened to the playback, I realized that what I, was, what I really dug about the song was the simplicity of the beat, and what I heard was just a lot of feeling, a lot of soul, a lot of spirit. And that's when I was convinced. So what I want you to do is practice at home playing a beat, either with a, a record or sing a melody, and just with, with no hot licks, no flash, just constantly focus on playing the beat and making it feel real good. Now once you've got the characteristic beat feeling great or grooving, now you can focus on adding creative ideas to it. The characteristic beat is the foundation of a song. It's almost like, oh, like a cake. And you can't put icing on a cake if there's no cake. The icing are the creative ideas. The beat itself is like the cake. And you want to add things to it, but you don't want to mess up that foundation. So I'm going to play along with this tape, and I'm going to add creative ideas to it.
now that I've explained these four basic concepts to you, I want to give you an exercise that you can practice at home or apply to any musical situation you get into. What I want you to do first is establish the basic characteristic beat. Pick any beat that you want, and I'll use this as an example. Once you establish this, I want you now to focus on time. You can play with a metronome or a drum machine or just sing a melody in your head and just focus on keeping it steady. Once this is locked in, I want you now to concentrate on making it groove. Just keep playing this beat over and over again until you feel real solid and real confident and then it feels real good. Now, what you do is start being creative with the beat, but only until these three, first three things are laid down solid. So the way we practice being creative with the beat is we'll start by concentrating on just the hi-hat. Keep the snare drum and the bass drum solid and try different ideas on the hi-hat. For example, Go back to the original beat and now focus on just the bass drum. You can spend as long as you want on each one of these areas, but for now I'm just going to give you an example. So now focus on trying different ideas on the bass drum and keep the snare drum and the hi-hat the same, steady. Now we'll focus on just the snare drum and keep the bass drum and the hi-hat steady. It's hard to concentrate on just one part. As you notice, it's easy to slip and do something on the bass drum with a hi-hat. But the idea is to try to focus as much as you can on each instrument. Because the hi-hat, the bass drum, and the snare drum are the main three parts of your drum set that keep time. And now we put all three ideas together, trying to use the hi-hat, the snare drum, and bass drum.
you can finally get into adding fills. But only until you've established some sort of foundation on the hi-hat, snare drum, and bass drum. The fills are useless if you can't keep solid time with the beat and be creative with it. If you just try to do fancy flicks and fills, that won't get you a job. But being able to take a beat and keep it solid and make it groove and add a few creative ideas to it, it'll work forever. Now that I've shown you how to practice these four concepts at home, I'm going to demonstrate playing these four concepts in a musical situation. On keyboards, I'm going to have John Casella and Sandy Williams on guitar accompany me. One, two, three.
This warm-up exercise is to help you develop your hands, and more specifically, your wrists. When I practice, I try to accomplish as much as possible in a short period of time. The 13 sticking patterns that you see in the printed material that comes with the video is based on George Lundstone's stick control book. Along with these sticking patterns, I have six foot patterns to play with the sticking patterns. When you play the drums, you use your four limbs anyway, so I try to practice with my four limbs all the time. When you practice these hand exercises, I want you to use just your wrists. I want you to tuck your fingers uh, under your hand and to have it touch the palm like this. And when you play, just use your wrist. This is to help develop the wrist specifically. But don't grip the stick hard or you'll hurt yourself. Just hold the stick as loosely as possible, but still leave your fingers on your hand. The wrist is the most important part of hand development. This is where you get your power, your speed, and your control. The fingers are important when you play, but they add more finesse to your playing, and they help you with rebound. The arms will give you power, but you still have the control and, and really more power with your wrist. The wrist is the focal point. So I want you to practice once again with using just your wrist, like this. Also, I want you to play with your heels down on the pedals. I want you to keep your heels down because the same thing applies to your ankle. There are ligaments and muscles in your ankle that you need to develop. And when you keep your heel up, these muscles and ligaments are squished up. They aren't, they aren't being exercised and extended, like this. When you play with your heel, heels down, you end up stretching these ligaments and these uh, muscles in here. This is something that I have found very valuable. When I play rock and roll, I always play with my heels up. But every day I practice with my heels down a certain amount of time, and I've found that I've got more control, more power, and more speed when I do play with my heels up. In this exercise, R will equal right hand, and L will equal left hand. Lines one and two are a combination of single strokes. Lines three and four are combinations of double strokes. Lines five, six, seven, and eight are combinations of single and double strokes, or the paradiddle and its variations. Lines nine, 10, 11, and 12 are combinations of three strokes. And finally, line 13 is a combination of four strokes, four rights, four lefts. Okay, the foot patterns, uh, for uh, foot pattern A is just quarter notes in the bass drum. Foot pattern B is just quarter notes in the hi-hat, or your left foot. Foot pattern C is alternating between your right foot and your left foot. Foot pattern D is alternating between your left foot and your right foot. Foot pattern E is fours with the right foot and two and four with the left foot. And foot pattern F is the reverse of that, which is fours with your left foot and two and four with your right foot. All this is in the printed material. Okay, let's start by setting your metronome at the quarter note equals 80 beats per minute. And I will demonstrate very slowly, one through 13, each line two times with foot pattern A. Remember to use just your wrists and keep your heels down. Okay, I'll begin by counting off for you. Play along with me. One, two, three, four.
Now this time I want you to play the exercise where the half note equals 80 beats per minute. That means this exercise will be twice as fast as the other one. I want you to play lines 1 through 13 with A, then B, and C with me. But then you go ahead and do the rest on your own. Remember to use just your wrist and keep your heels down on the pedals. I'm going to count off two measures and then we'll begin. One, two, three, four, one, two, ready, play. This time, I want you to play this exercise where the half note equals 120 beats per minute. I want you to play each line two times with pattern A, B, C, D, E, and F. Remember to use just your wrist and keep your heels down. I'll count off two measures. One, two, three, four, one, two, ready, play.
once you've learned these exercises with just your wrists, I want you to practice these exercises playing with fingers and wrists. Now you can release the stick in your hand and let the fingers catch the rebound. As the stick comes out, your fingers can pull the stick back in and you can play this exercise even faster. So it looks kind of like this. I'll just show you without a metronome. See, with this exercise now, using your fingers, you can learn to play this exercise even faster than I was playing before. Let me demonstrate this for a little bit with pattern A. Okay? So practice these exercises every day for maybe 15 minutes. What I'll do is I'll do a, a 1 through 13 with A, B, C, D, E, and F two times using just wrists. Then I go right into playing 1 through 13 with A, B, C, D, E, and F with fingers and wrists, gradually getting faster. If you use a metronome, just follow the metronomic markings every day and just gradually increase the speed. This is a good way to warm up your hands, but you're using your feet with it. This exercise is to help develop your feet. I want you to use your hands with your feet because when you play the drums, you use all four limbs anyway. So this exercise focuses on the feet, but we use our hands through company. We'll use the same 13 patterns that we use for the hands. Now you play those patterns in your feet. There'll be three accompanying patterns with your hands, and they go something like this. Pattern A. One, two, three, go. Pattern B goes something like this. One, two, ready, play. And pattern C is something like this. One, two, ready, play. Now I'm going to play this exercise with the quarter note equals 120 beats per minute. What I want you to eventually be able to do is to play pattern A with 1 through 13 in your feet, right-handed, then play it left-handed. Then play pattern B with 1 through 13, right-handed, and then play it left-handed. Then play pattern C with 1 through 13, right-handed, and then play it left-handed. I'm going to demonstrate 1 through 13 with pattern A, right-handed, and then I'll play it left-handed. I'll count off one measure. One, two, ready, play.
So what I want you to do is play these foot patterns every day after you do your hand patterns. And between playing your hand patterns and your foot patterns and using all four limbs, you should be able to give yourself a pretty good workout. I do this every day, and then I continue on to playing more involved things. And besides that, I definitely work on my groove every day. I work on those four concepts, laying down a beat, keeping steady time, making it feel great, and then being creative with the beat. I'm going to demonstrate, in a solo, the four concepts I've been talking about. Define a characteristic beat of a song. Keep solid time. Make that beat groove. And be creative with that beat. I'm also going to demonstrate technique based on the hand and foot exercises. <laughs> 